Hello everybody, watch it, this is Billy Cultus this time around, and um, today, I, I don't expect this video to be super duper long, I'm gonna actually get a little bit into logic, which is unusual for me, I know, but um, yeah, we're gonna take and get into a little bit of logic that I thought it would be interesting to share, it's kind of a tutorial basically about how to do a certain thing, and what we're gonna be covering is a... Uh, Related to if you're designing, I guess it'd be level design, you know, like, uh, but if you're designing your visuals for your world, and um, it's going to be related to the sun and sky settings. There's the sun up there. We don't, it's currently, that's the default. But what we're going to do is we're going to get in and we're going to be messing around with basically this gadget, the sun and sky. I'm going to stamp one. I tend to like to, when I'm putting this into a scene, make it kind of bigger. So even though we're not making a full, you know, 100% scene in this at all, really, we're going to, I'm going to make it larger. So it helps if you're making a full scene when you get all the details and stuff in there, if this is really big, so you can easily find it. Uh, in the past, I would... Uh, leave it the default size and once the scene started to fill out with details it would get lost and I couldn't find it and I needed to switch some settings you know and I couldn't find it but a uh, little tip there pro tip is make that sucker real big you know probably bigger than this but um anyway for our purposes this is it this is this that dictates where the Sun object is and so we're gonna cover an element that was put into dreams with its last big update I believe I think that's when this was put in but there's a gadget in here in um, sensors and that is this this date time gadget and what the date time gadget does is it actually tracks the real time you know on the uh, planet earth that we're on right this minute because we are on earth we're not on a, a different planet right now, so, you know, this will track that. It won't track Mars or something. I think there's some, like, settings you might be able to change to do that, but that's beside the point. That's more complicated stuff. But it will track the current date and time. Now, there's some settings in this that got added. I'm open its tweak menu with the, with the button here. L1... You press, press L1 square, you know, if you're, this is kind of beginner stuff, but you know, to open these tweak menus, but, um, local time and date, we've got current time and date, UTC, I really don't know what UTC stands for, and we've got, uh, session time, and the one we're going to be looking at, though, is local time, this will hook up to whatever your local time zone is on the Earth, it gives you an output, and it'll output a fat wire, as they call it in dreams, carrying a whole bunch of different data from your local clock or whatever and uh, what we want to see so they added some functionality to this sun sky thing and like I said the last update in which you can go over here this wasn't here before this um, clock tweak menu and um, they have some stuff for degrees sun yaw sun pitch as you see but um this set time for input thing this is this is the thing they added in the update and what you can do this is pretty neat you can open your your local time and date thing and you can go from your local time and you can take that fat wire output with X and you can plug it right in to set time see there's a fat wire going in there and that's activated and everything I'll close this up and if you notice when I did that, it changed the actual position of our sun in our sky. And the sun's position in the sky is going to correlate with where it is in real life at the exact time of day at which, you know, you're doing this or which this scene is active. Of course, it's not going to do it right because uh, this scene's paused. You have to run the time. But if you run the time, if you're active, you know actively playing in the scene the sun 
position will change in real time according to the real sun position, you know, in the sky, wherever your time zone is. And you'll be able to see it. And I, it really does move. I've actually tested it. It's pretty neat. But that's a thing that you can do. Now, that's not entirely, though, the main focus of this tutorial. Although it's nice to show you this if you didn't know about it. Because, you know, you might not know how to hook that up or whatever. But, um, that's pretty simple. Now, the trick, though, is this. What I'm really... The meat of what we're going to talk about is going to be this. This. And this is a problem if you, if you do dreams. You know, for any amount of time you design your scenes and stuff. And you... One thing you'll notice in dreams is that... You can have a variable kind of relationship with the skybox, the, the, the default. I'm going to change these flex. This is not necessary to part of this business. I just like the way these ones look. But you can have, you know, problems with it visually. You might, if you're fine with the way that sun looks as is, which you might be, depending on the visual style you're going for, that'll work. And more power to you, but um, oftentimes I find myself not liking that that sun default it doesn't look you see you can control the size all these settings in here but it doesn't look like a real sun it's all blobby and it's always like fluctuating and it has this kind of painting look which is like i said stylistically that might be fine but what what i want to do is show you basically how you can make a fake sun and basically you can make it look like whatever you want we're going to use paint, and you can make the sun look like whatever you want, but you can have it follow this doohickey in the sky all the time. So that way your fake sun will move in real time with this sun if you're hooking this thing up and doing like a, you know, an animal crossing kind of like time of day type situation where it follows the real actual time of day. But I'm going to show you how you can hook up a fake sun. Because it was a little tricky. A little tricky. But it's actually not that difficult. So we're going to close that up. Got that all set up. Now what we want to do... Is... We are going to press square. And we're going to get... And we're going to make a placeholder sculpture. And it's just going to be a cube. It can be whatever you want. But I would just go with a cube. Uh, probably. Because this is not going to be visible, it is not going to be collidable in the end, it's not really going to do anything but kind of hold the place and hold some logic that we're going to need. So I'll put it dead center in the world, which if you have the grid floor on, you know, these visual thing, it's right where these crosshairs cross, it's dead center, and I would turn on the grid snap and put that right there, dead center in the world. It's going to make your thermo go up too, so... After we stamp that out, I'm just going to completely exit the sculpt. We don't need anything more than that block. For now, I'm going to turn this off, but I will return it back on. I'm going to go to the tools. We'll reduce the detail way down on this. That way, the thermal won't be bothered by it. And it, like I said, this is not going to be visible, so we don't need to be real high def with it. So we'll turn it way down so it doesn't bother the thermal anymore. And, um, the next thing we're going to want to do is we are going to, uh, I'm going to hide this floor for the time being. But the next thing we're going to want to do is we are going to get and we're going to make a painting. And this is where we're going to make our fake sun. I'm going to do stamp fleck. Now you could do this any way you want. I'm doing the most simplistic way. For the sake of brevity and stuff, but you could really paint whatever you wanted as long as... I would probably make it flat. I probably would make it out of paint. I suppose you could probably... If you did this with a sculpt, it might throw off the balance of the thing. But we're just going to put this on here. It's on snap to surface, stamp fleck. I'm just going to stamp it a couple, three times, make a nice thick painting circle. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to group it inside so now it's inside a group with the cube 
now that we got that, I'm going to turn up brightness uh, probably quite a bit. I won't, I'll turn off, don't emit, you know, don't emit light. Because we already got a light source in the sun, in the sky. So we don't need this to actually emit, we just need to glow. Because this is our false sun. So, I will turn the grid back on. Firstly. Because what we're going to want to do, is we're going to want to go out. Really, you could probably do this in any direction. I'm going to scale it up too, because as we get further away, it's going to be so small you're not going to be able to see it. But keep that green line stable and we're gonna go way way out you know I would go you know quite a long distance out you know it might vary depending on your needs but go way out there from where that cube is the center of our world is at way, way let's just keep going okay yeah I'll scale it up a little more because you see we're way out there and it's gonna be quite small so there, we're way, way out there. There's our fake sun. See that? So that's nice and nice and round. See, compare that to that. Maybe it's a little small. I don't know. It depends on your taste. If you need it bigger, you could make it bigger or whatnot. Um, but, you know, nice and round. You know, kind of more like the real sun in the sky. Not like, you know, if you want to go for a little less painty, you know, fluttery look to it you, this will look good now now we've got that that's inside that that's all one thing now what we're gonna do next this is interesting part we are going to go to gadgets let's get out of sensors movers and outputs and what you're gonna, gonna find in here is the look at rotator now we gotta look at rotator, and I would hold down the L1 button, which stamps these things to a surface. And this is why a cube's handy for your placeholder object. You put that look at rotator, just stamp it with R2. And set it on this. Make sure it's outside the grouped object. Don't go inside the group and stamp it. Put it outside, because we want the whole entire thing to be going with this. Now we'll open up our tweak menu, L1 square, on the look at rotator, and we get this little tweak menu. Now you see that arrow. I'm going to turn this on even though we don't need it just so I can see this whole deal. But you see this arrow? That's the direction it's going to point. We want to line that arrow up. I would turn on grid snap for this. So we, yeah, see? Right down that line point straight at our fake sun. And we know our fake sun's right dead on that line. So that's great. We want that arrow lined up with the fake sun. Now, Depending on your visuals, this stay upright thing might be important. Uh, for our purposes, not, because the sun's just a blot. You know, there's not any special details, you know, on the top or bottom that need to be, you know, accurate or whatever. So we'll turn that off. It doesn't need to be perfect straight up and down. Now, these settings, we want to put the damping all the way up. Oh, another thing we want to do, we want to have the rotation speed as high as it can go. So... You can get in here and go just put a bunch of, all the way up. Either way, you could drag this and get it, or you can open the key input thing. Either way, just get it all the way up. And then rotation strength. I have it around, I think I, I, it works pretty good at around 70. If you put it too high, you'll get some weirdness, which I'll, I'll actually demonstrate that probably. But um, for now, what we got is... We got this, this, this is... Okay, now what you want to do, don't touch the arm. There's nothing in there that needs changing, at least. You want to go to this... This little tweak bar, inputs and outputs. And in here you're going to see a bunch of choices. This is the important one, target position. Because what we need is we need our fake sun to be in the exact position that this doohickey is pointing in the sky. You know, the exact position of this... Skybox Sun. So, in order to achieve that, we'll open our Sun and Sky tweak menu. We'll go to this, um, let's see here. I believe it's this one. Sun Position is what we want. So, Sun Position and this thing, Target Position, need to be connected. Take the output of Sun Position, and you hook that. 
into target position. I believe if we press play, we'll get what we want. Yep, voila. You see, it's right there. Now, of course, you're going to have one issue that I'm going to talk about briefly, and that's the sun in the skybox is kind of infinitely distant. And your fake sun is a finite distance away from your scene center. Now, that's why I recommend moving it out as far as you possibly can, kind of, because that will kind of help alleviate some of the discrepancies you'll get from that. Because your, your real light source is infinitely distant, and this is not. But far enough away, and it's barely noticeable. So, you know, put it nice and far, and it should be pretty good and synced up. But as you can see, it does follow the position in the sky pretty well of where our light is coming from, from the real sun. Now all you need to do, and you may not want to do this part, maybe you want to combine them, but what I would do is turn off the visibility on this real sun. It will still cast the light, but it will be invisible, and all you'll see is your nice, nice crisp fake sun. So I'm going to rewind time, and that thing's back where it started. I am going to... I'm going to get into tools and we will re open up our... Take that off hide so we can see our ground, even though it's not very impressive in any way. Let's play, play again and watch this work. Now see, up it is, and it'll follow. I've tested it. It'll follow the real-time sun all through the sky. You know, whatever time of day it is, according to your clock, your date and time. So that's how you can put a fake sun, or this could be used for anything, really. You can put a fake uh, whatever that tracks this in the sky, you know, at all times, at real time. But basically, that's how you do it. And I would get in here now at this point and take this, take the cube, open its tweak menu. And we need to set its thing. We don't want it collidable, because it's just a placeholder, and we don't want it visible either. And I would, you know, for interaction, all this stuff is its cost off. There you go. So now it's not visible. You know, when you're playing your game or whatever, and you're running around your scene, and you can just, you have your sun. It's all tracking well. Now there's one last thing we'll try to cover, and that is that basically... Whenever you load up your scene and start, you know, whenever somebody loads in and your game starts playing, the sun, the fake sun's going to start out not at its proper place. It doesn't take long, as you can see when we push play, it jumps right up there and it's in position. But, um, you know, that's going to look weird if, you know, you start, your character is looking that way and then it's like suddenly... You know, the sun jumps up into position. Now, one way you could alleviate that is always have your character load in in a direction where they're not facing the sun. And it'll probably jump into position before the person can, you know, turn the camera around and see anything weird like that. But uh, it is, another way you can do that, fix this problem, is if you basically go in and have a timeline. Let's see. What's your timeline? In, in reality, if you're making a scene out of all this stuff, you might want to actually put a microchip down. I'm not going to do that for now, but um, it would probably be, be the best thing to do if you're really going to do this in a real game or something. Probably would be best to order this all in a microchip, but here we go. We got our timeline, and what you can do is you go in here and we'll close this. Go to these gadgets, camera lighting and all this stuff wonderful jazz and you get the wiper out and we put the wiper in there and then what we want to do is we want to let's see I think we want that transition via color you could choose a color for your wipe or whatever we'll also we're gonna choose a circular see an iris transition here but what we can do is essentially we can control this so that whenever you load into the scene, you'll basically have a transition that will 
very brief, you know. You don't want it to be... annoying or anything. But you can mess with these to fix them up as you need things to be. You know. Like that. A little less. And you can shorten it and all that stuff. So, you can shorten it in the timeline. Grabbing that end and kind of bring it down. But what you do is you put that in there and you... Let's rewind. You shorten it so that it... It basically just takes just enough time to load in so that it gives your sun time to get up in the sky and they, nobody can see it. It doesn't look wonky. So, you know, just a little brief fade in will cover that up nicely. But basically, that's about all there is to this. It's a, a pretty simple thing when you know, you know, about this stuff here. It's pretty, pretty basic. Nothing super, you know, incredibly logic heavy. Let me uh, go here and um, I wanted to demonstrate something else though. I'm going to get this rotator and I, ju I just wanted to kind of demonstrate. I'm going to take this off of here for a second. Delete that because I wanted to demonstrate with this rotation strength, which you could probably mess with this and play around with it. But um, rotation strength, you put it 100% and I wanted to show you what happens. Oh, well, that's odd. Seems to be working really, really nice. And actually, see that? With that, up, the sun just jumps right up. Now, the funny thing is, though, I remember doing this. That's odd. Because I kind of did a test run when I was developing this. And the funny thing about it was that the... Oh, that's the wrong edge there. No, but I had the rotation strength all the way up and it was giving me a hard time. It was like the sun was hitting up in the sky and bouncing around and it just wouldn't stop bouncing around. It was I don't know what that was about. I don't know what's different about this particular one. But I guess it should work for you. I guess you can have the rotation strength at max if you just follow everything I did in this video. So I guess you don't have to worry about that. But uh, you still probably kind of need the transition because, you know, you can still... Even though it's jumping pretty fast up there, there's just a brief period when you probably load in your game. You'd want to transition to cover it up or something. Some way to cover it up. Anyway, though, that's how you do that. The basicest, you know, level at the most simplest level. There's a whole lot of stuff I didn't cover that, that you know, would have to be worked out maybe if you're getting into... You know, because, you know, you want a certain time of day, maybe the sun changes color and then the sky changes color you know like a sunset or something like that and that's a whole nother ball game that's above and beyond what we've done here but you know this is a basic uh starting point anyway we covered that in a nice nice little uh feature but uh yeah i hopefully this helps uh, somebody out and you know if you if you have anything to say say it in the comments that's appreciated if you have suggestions for other stuff, for, uh, you know, us to cover, you know, in tutorials or, you know, questions like that, we'll, uh, definitely, uh, take it into consideration. Some things, you know, we don't, we don't even know the answers to some things, so we might not always be able to help out, but we definitely, uh, always looking for suggestions, because, uh, sometimes we, you know, we draw a blank, we don't know, we're just... And sometimes another thing is we forget, <laughs> you know, there's a lot of things that we take for granted... And we forget, you know, people don't, other people might not really understand. Because, you know, you're just a beginner or something, and you might not understand it. So, you know, we tend to forget about things we could cover that we just take for granted. Because we're like, oh, that's simple. Everybody knows that. When in reality, not everybody knows it. You know, some people are starting out. But, uh, yeah, if you have suggestions, uh, leave a comment or something like that about, about it. We always appreciate that. We'll try to do our best with it. Um... Leave a like on the video for sure, and, uh, you know, if you're not subscribed already, uh, go ahead and subscribe. Uh, also, we have a coffee. If you if you have the means to support us, you could help out in that method. Down in the uh, description, there's a link to that. If you so choose, you could get on the monthly supporters list, even, possibly. You know, which, here, here goes our monthly credits, by the way. Here goes our monthly supporters. There they go. Rising... 
all the way to the skies. You know, great, uh, great applause there. But, um, yeah, I uh, thank you for watching. I hope it helped out. I hope you come back uh, later. This has been Billy Cultist. Bye-bye.